All right. Well, I thought I'll start with a, a quick overview of our campus. For those of you who have not traveled through SFO for quite some time, you might not realize that we have four bi-directional runways, four terminals, lots of gates and infrastructures, roadways, acres of land. As a matter of fact, because we're in the business of GIS, we have already mapped over 16.5 million square feet of spaces to date. Over $1 billion worth of underground utilities and even two wastewater treatment plants. As Kristen has mentioned, our team name is Infrastructure Information Management. We report to the Chief Development Officer. We have six lines of businesses. Technology Visioning, which we have deployed Enterprise Bluebeam, GIS, of course, and also BIM. We also have a database administrator who oversees all of our backend infrastructure. A developer that help us do applications and programs. Last but not least, digital document management. So about five years ago, we had an opportunity. As a matter of fact, an opportunity that is $7.5 billion worth. It's a capital program that help us establish BIM implementation. These are some of the major achievements that we did, which is the Harvey Milk Terminal, the long-term parking garage, and consolidated administrative campus. And this is actually where my office is located, the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And these are some of just the major projects that help us realize our vision, which is to have a nucleus of BIM and GIS integrated together. And how we do that is we take these models from the project teams that are verified, integrated into GIS, which we have already established for about 13 years. We integrate all of that information back to our target systems and then distribute this information back to our stakeholders. And to date, we have already integrated GIS with some of our major target systems, such as our 911 for first responders, our situation awareness, even our fire trucks for their ARF airfield simulator, and of course, wayfinding for our passengers. And how we do that with the project teams is that, as you know, there's designers, GC, the trades, and the end goal is to get that information to our stakeholders. When they design these models for us, they're going to design it against the standards that we provide. Also, we will both validate and incrementally collect those models to make sure that they're under our standards. Once we get the turnover conformed discipline models, we push that into GIS, integrated to systems, push it to our stakeholders. And because we have all these models coming in, we have to establish the back end to receive them, which is why we established three different data models, the interior data model, the exterior ones, and also the subservice ones. What that means is that now we're able to take any type of CAD drawings or 3D models, push it into GIS, and then align it against our data models and our special coordinate systems and create a true window to the SFO world. Let me show you what that means. This is GOI. This is our GIS viewer. And because now we're able to push model into GIS, we can overlay it with information such as our underground utilities. We take those models, flatten it into a floor plan. What you see here is the Revit model that was turned over from a project team. This is the VAV box. On the left side, you will see all this information that we have asked the team to collect for us for specific type of equipment that's gonna support the opening day of the, the infrastructure itself. So facilities books needs that. These All these information are purposeful. The door, it's lined up against our door numbering schema, the hardware information, all of that are collected. And with this model, what we do is we push it into GIS, we flatten it into a floor plan. And you can tell that that door is now inside the floor plan with all of that collected data intelligence behind it. And the great thing about it is that we're not looking at one model at a time, but we can actually overlay all of these other GIS information, even in aerial imagery. And because we have this GOI, the centralized source of infrastructure information, 
we can customize our viewer for specific stakeholders such as interior viewer. What you see here is the floor plan for that specific deliverable. The color boxes are tenant information, space types. The right side, we're actually trying to understand the navigation from point A to point B for our stakeholders, turn by turn, just like Google Map. As I mentioned, indoor navigation is really crucial to especially our passenger as well. Nowadays, to navigate through a complex airport, I think the passengers would like to have the autonomy on their own with their devices to know how, how long does it take, right? For example, to go from curb to gate. And this is something that is in development right now. Also, we're able to support our vendors better. What you see here is the Fly SFO map. And because it is supported and developed by a third party vendor, Instead of them trying to create or update the floor plan, we create an API for them to consume. And because of that level, all those standardized information that are coming into the model is consistently up to date and we are the owner of that source. For example, what you see here on the left side is our partnership with Apple. Apple also wants to do indoor navigation and that's why we jointly created an interior model data format. On the right side, you see is Locust Labs, which is a major play in the airline space for indoor navigation for airports. We push these APIs to them on a frequent basis so they are kept up to date. Dynamic Twin. I heard that Robert was talking about digital twin and in the airport space, this is a very, very common term nowadays. At SFO, very much like Robert mentioned, we are trying to understand how to align those dynamic changes within the real world environments against the turnover models. Rather than trying to preserve the snapshot in time at the project end, what we're trying to do is, of course, push, excuse me, push it into GIS, but at the same time, knowing how to push all of that changes that is happening dynamically in the real world back into our model, or perhaps stay in GIS. So what that means is that at the end, we're trying to keep those models alive. We call it the S managed models. And those alignment needs to happen for the entire life cycle of that infrastructure. Hence, we call it the dynamic twin. So what I've shown you so far was all about the 2D side of GIS. What we've been developing recently is also the 3D GIS component. And this is the campus viewer of that 3D GIS. Same thing GOI, but in 3D. What we have done is we have converted all of those 3D mesh into objects. So there's data intelligence behind them. And so the users can click on it, find the information they're looking for. And because we're overlaying GIS information to it, you can see that we can also capture such as ground service vehicle. In the future, what we'll love to do is have the Wi-Fi enabled beacon to it so that we can see them moving around the airfield. And uh, just a fun fact as well, we also have a scissors lift, you know, that is starting to uh, track interior spaces. We tend to lose our scissors lift all the time. We spend 40 hours per week just to look for them. So that is now GIS enabled. What you see here on the screen right now are the airfield signage, airfield lightings, which we use to comply with the Part 139 FAA compliance. And the great thing is that we can also capture landscape because this is all outside the airfield side. Landscape department came to us and they wanted to understand why are the trees growing so fast? It's going so high that it's starting to become an obstruction. So we can do pattern analyses for them. And so everything that is collected in GIS is purposeful so that we can help whatever stakeholders needs there might be. CAD GIS BIM Aerial. This is really kind of a, a kitchen sink of everything coming together, but let's take a look at the inside of the building. What 3D GIS is allow the stakeholders to do, it's now they can actually see the inside of the building. And what that means is that they can go from floor to floor, layer by layer, and be able to kind of peel it off I guess I'm having a little, oh, right, there you go. A little delay here. So you can see it can go from floor to floor, peel it off from the roof, all the way flatten it down to the floor plan. Or you can go back up and see as many details or as little details as you like.
And solar panels is actually something that we're just talking about repositioning so that the connection will be changed. So we'll have to keep that up to date and just following our dynamic twin process. Utilities, we talked about subservice utilities. So here what you see is that we have a cut plane traversing through the building model. You can see all of those foundational piers that are supporting the building structure itself plus the 3D underground utilities that provide service to that building. It's very important. We have just recently fulfilled um, or completed the master underground utility study so that we can understand the condition of all of these underground utilities and starting to track a lot of the pipe breaks and patterns. Integrated BIM data, this is really fun. Fun because it is very easy to use. What you see here is the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And so what we can do is enable our user to self-service. They can take a slicer, go into building, and go into very granular detail. Because a lot of times facilities folks will ask like, hmm, how can I plan the day better? Do I need to bring a ladder? How tall is the ceiling? What's the configuration of the room? This is the type of slicer or web scene that can allow them to do so. And another thing is that, for example, the first responders, sometimes they have an incident and they want to know where is the closest exit or entryway. So they want to be able to understand the surroundings before they get to that incident. This is all going through a web browser. It's a link. It's very easy to use. Our stakeholders do not need to have a Revit license or any type of, you know, very, any type of deep training into it. They can navigate through it just like, like a gaming engine. And what you see here is also an integrated data, not just from them, but also the airfill coming from GIS. Some of them are from CAD. Visualizing the past, present, future. 3D GIS also allows us to do something that was not be able to done before. What you see here is the pre-build of the boarding area B after demolition, and because we incrementally collect models, we're able to pop it in, geo-referenced it, that's why it fits, and can serve a lot of different purposes from planning to visualization to even communication. Lastly, I just want to wrap up by giving an overview of what this all means to us to be able to integrate BIM into GIS and have this world of GIS into our, in our hands. What you see is the overall campus, delivery of models from these project teams, capture of the data that is very specific to what these different type of assets needs. Things that we need to do preventative maintenance on, it goes very granular. We can overlay it with many different types of data. You see the red line, blue line. Those are air train data that are coming in from a 2D drawing. The space type, the tenant information in those color boxes. And you can click it through the different levels, the different viewing. And that's why we always believe that GIS is the window into the world of SFO. Thank you very much, everyone.